Welcome to Julie Mango TV. I'm Robin Bourne and I'm here with Maria Del Mar Rosario, the director of short film Nymph. The film is about a newly arrived immigrant in New York who is pressured by her economic situation to enter a world of embellished sex work. Thanks so much for joining me, Maria. Hi. Let's hop right into it. <laughs> So to start, could you tell us a little bit about your Caribbean heritage? Um, well, I'm from Puerto Rico. I grew up in in looking at the horizon. Um, and right now I've been like part of the Puerto Rican diaspora uh, as a resident of New York City for, for a while now. I studied in New York and I studied in Cuba. Mm -hmm. um, and when I went to study at AICTV Cuba, I started seeing because I had come from from studying in film in the United States, and then like I'm in the Caribbean, and I'm like, wow, I can look horizontal, you know? Like mm -hmm. I am, like I'm placed in Puerto Rico, and suddenly we were always looking north, and it's so much better to, not so much better, but it it's it it's so rich to look like I felt in Cuba that almost like it was part of, we were part of the same country. There was so, like, it was like a strange, strong connection I had uh, with Cuba. Almost like I felt like I was Cuban, or, like it was another town of my country. Um, yeah, that's. So it's like the culture is very similar and you felt that strong connection to yeah. go to Cuba. Yeah, like it's inevitable that we are so much of who we are is informed by by the environment, by yeah, by by the nature and and the air and mm -hmm. also like the Afro Caribbean descendant, the music, like the sounds we hear, like the, everything in influences who we are. Mm -hmm. And I felt being in Cuba that I was getting all the, the same information to be who I am. I could express that Puerto Rican part of me in Cuba. I was, I, I, I had the channel in there. Mm. I like that you mentioned, we always look North. I'm Caribbean too and a lot of people we look towards the states or to Canada when there's so much in the yeah. Caribbean already yeah I, I think honestly sometimes I'm like wow you know it's not because I'm patriotic although like I have that connection but sometimes it's like wow it's crazy we are from this place like like people move to Puerto Rico because they want to to live in that in that environment there are so many Americans actually moving now to Puerto Rico that's another subject but but sometimes I'm like wow you know like I'm from here and and when I think I'm from here it's also like the the artists that that are like mm -hmm. that influence me from here like wow or like the music the people that look in my, look into my eyes you know like the when when I walk in the Caribbean, whether it's in Cuba or, or Puerto Rico, You're something Caribbean. yeah, like I'm like wow, <laughs> I I am from here. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. It's definitely great to feel that way, especially the Caribbean. I want to even explore more of the Caribbean too because it's definitely rich with that um, culture, like you said. Yeah, and then sorry, like the the way of uh i feel like other countries um relate with nationalism comes mm -hmm. with like often like for example if you look at a football game and your country wins okay that's that's some sort of nationalism but but like nationalism can come in in different ways and and at the same time your identity is so entangled to it you know, and like I'm talking from the from the perspective of a colonized country. You know, like imagine my my identity in terms of how nationalism is affected, and and that's what I'm saying. Like perhaps in my case, being from the Caribbean, 
it's not that kind of nationalism of like my country is the best and one that or we rule it's more like uh, i can mm -hmm. you know i, know I got exactly that's good mean. yeah that's why everybody wants to have a piece of it mm -hmm. thank you so much mm -hmm. so jumping into your work a little bit so your work explores themes at the intersection of gender and colonialism why is that important to you um well, I feel like it's it's intertwined. And I'm talking about uh, some things that I feel sometimes as a woman that come from from colonialism. And I mean, in general, to give you like a quick answer, I understand that I live in patriarchy. And that same system that colonized my country, at the same time, I feel it in my body. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a deep one, actually. <laughs> it's still, it does still really run deep. It's there. So although we see quite a bit of sex in Nymph, the film is really a story of survival. Can you talk a bit about what it is that Angelica really wants? I feel like for Angelica, when I was um, when I was writing Nymph, I was thinking of of I was thinking more like of 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 a moment, not necessarily like I was talking to friends uh, about the script, and somebody's like, "But you need to have some something that she wants with a purpose, and she needs to like have a struggle." But, but I was like, I had this feeling of, of a moment when sometimes like we go through an experience and, and you feel like you get punched in the face by life. And I think uh, Angelica is in a process of transitioning because she just moved to, to another country and she's starting to, to learn the dynamics of it. And in that, in that transition, she becomes a, a, a token of something that as a woman, she, she's vulnerable to, to become as, a, as an attractive woman. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know if necessarily she, understand, she understands what she wants at that point in, mm -hmm. in the film. Okay. Like she's um, definitely trying new things but then you see like her push forward and pull back as well. So I get that she doesn't really know she's just going through it, right? I feel like sometimes there are some, sometimes in life there are some, you have so many options and, and possibilities and especially like being a, a migrant, not like, not always you have so, so much clarity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to survive mm -hmm. before you know or, or sometimes you need to experience to then decide, this is what I want, this is what I don't want. Mm -hmm. So we have seen a lot of sex work move with technology to online spaces, just, you know, the climate that we're in. Why was it really important for you to show more of a real life version, a physical version of this reality for an immigrant woman? Um. I mean, like, honestly, I was writing at the, when I was writing new, and I think most of the times you, I write from, from what is happening, what I see at the time I was like, I was at ITFA in the festival in Amsterdam and I passed by this red district and I saw these women in the, in front of a, a store mm -hmm. like literally like just and I, I i don't know like for me that image was kind of like how i started uh, doing research in those kind of shops in, when i came back to new york i walked into a sex shop and and started to talk to some of these women two of whom are are in the film mm -hmm. um yeah so i i uh, probably i don't have I haven't explored online. It's just something that I saw. Mm -hmm. 
I like that you actually went in and then those two ladies actually ended up being in the um the film. How was that? So how did they get to actually be actors in the film? I talk to 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 people. I think it's important to inform the film with with the real people who had the like like for example one of them Roxana she she told me so many things that are important you know like you don't no it's not like that it's like this this is how it happens you should and she was like you should take a show you you need to see it you need to understand what it's like mm -hmm. um and every time i'm i'm making a film it's important to to blend it with with the real characters of of the of those environments and and to make the story also informed by their experience. Mm -hmm. I really like that. I really, really like that. So even speaking of those two, and speaking of Roxana, like you mentioned, at every step of the way, Angelica had a more seasoned female coworker to guide her in from in the shop to the booth. But we see that it's Ruben she reaches out for, out to, to find somebody to help her secure her papers. So could we talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I was thinking at that point that it's so strange how we are taught as women. I And I was informing that by don't know when in my upbringing mm -hmm. i was taught to ask a man for help and and i think that's part of like what's happening like you think the answers are in somewhere else, are in in another person and not in yourself mm -hmm. um i mean like the, uh, amex i think with nymph i was exploring like some dark places I, oh, I you don't want to look, but are there? Yeah, sometimes we don't know where to get the answers from, and we get the answers from other people when really and truly the answers are right in front of us. Um, I was going to ask something along those lines, but I like that you did mention that part. So before we go, because this is a really quick chat that we have, but I really want to hear more about what you have next because we see a lot being challenged. And as you said, some pretty dark moments in Nymph, some pretty um, explicit moments that we see. One thing that I would love to comment on is the scene where we see her in the booth and we can see it from her perspective. I really think that that was important because we're really seeing that's what they have to see. That's what they have to go through. And it's over and over and over again. And for anybody watching this, go watch Nymph and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> So I like that you do um, really expose those darker truths. So I'm really excited to hear what you have in the workings. I'm working. Um, I I'm working a couple of things. Um, one is a short, mm -hmm. and it's dealing with immigration, and it's also de dealing with the f with with the human body. Um, it's called womb vientre. Um, I have also like uh, developing a, a feature. Uh, the the title is Ponche Colonial, and it's also exploring gentrification in Puerto Rico and and colonialism and the explo the liberation of the female body. And and yeah, those are like the two main projects I have in the works right now. That will be definitely interesting to see the gentrification because, as you said before, so many Americans are moving down there. Yeah. That didn't even cross my mind. Wow. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I definitely I'm excited to see if this one just comes out. Hopefully we'll definitely Hopefully. follow up. <laughs> yeah. And I want you to let everybody know where we can find you. So socials, website, let us know. Um, well, my name is Maria del Mar Rosario, and that's my website, Maria del Mar Rosario.com. And my Instagram is Maria del Mar Rosario, but one, one R. Maria del Mar, one R Rosario. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yep. So 
that is where you can find her ladies and gentlemen i do want to thank you so much for chatting with me today about nim and hopefully we will get to talk to you in the future about your projects that you have coming up i really do want to talk about the gentrification of puerto rico because that is something that is probably going to be happening soon around the caribbean so i'm really excited for that and on that note thank you everyone for watching julie mango tv Subscribe for more conversations with Caribbean filmmakers. I'm Robin Bourne. See y'all next time.